Okay. Welcome to the Rabbit Design feed, the, the Rabbit Design YouTube channel. Um, this was kind of a somewhat highly anticipated live show. So a while ago I posted this on the Rabbit Design feed in Facebook, my Facebook group. And and this group's growing, 611 members. Awesome. Um, I love engagement, so please chime in. I'd love to know if my mic is working correctly, so please chime in. Uh, you can grab, uh, you can grant StreamYard uh, permissions in Facebook if you're watching from Facebook, and that lets me see who is commenting. If you're on YouTube, I can see who's commenting, no problem. And so I posted this a while ago. Post your final renders, and I will give them quick touch-ups in future video about Photoshop. Now, this video is going to assume that you use Photoshop 1, and that you have some basic knowledge of Photoshop. Now, I'm not going to do a tutorial, per se. We're going to kind of fly through this. Oh, mic is not working properly. OK, so does that mean it's too low, too high, tinny, something weird? Because it shows I have vis visible feedback, but that's about it. Let me know. Anybody else that's watching, you want to let me know what's going on with my mic? Um, someone made a comment said it's not working properly. Oh, it's tinny. Let's. Uh, all right, we're going to give it a second. I'm going to unplug it and try uh, replugging it back in. There we go. Let's try that. That probably works. There's like three different three different places you have to make sure you're unmuted. So I think that that should have worked. All right, perfect. Let's let's keep moving. <laughs> Technical difficulties. So I'm going to assume some of you users know how to use Photoshop to some extent. I'm hoping you do because that's really what this video is going to be about. I had a bunch of uh, user uh, submissions here. There's a few that I see that I want to touch right off the bat. Uh, I do want to mention also that I've most of the user submission here are not a um, not up to the resolution that they could be. You can post up to a 2048 by 2048 image resolution in Facebook. So it's good to know that and also then make sure you're exporting to higher resolutions. Um, you can do the compression yourself, or you can uh, export at a higher resolution and let Facebook do its own compression algorithms on your image. I'm gonna stay, uh, start with this image from Dan Forsyth. It's a pretty well done shot um, for the most part. And I think if I had an, a higher resolution image, this would be even better. Um, it'd be even better to work with, but I'm gonna work with what we've got here. So I'm gonna save this image as, uh, I've got a folder called send and delete. And then I'm just going to drag it into my Photoshop and let's get started. So, and we're going to just jump right into this. No precursor stuff. And I haven't practiced these. I don't really know, you know, what I'm going to do before I'm doing it. Um, I can tell you just by looking at this, I might try a background replacement, although this background seems to fit the scene a little bit. Um, we've got lights on 
here and I would probably do something with this if I was commissioned to do, do this job where I would replace those lights with something that just had a glass texture and were not on because it doesn't make sense for these to be on in this scene. Same with these ones on the wall here. So I might have like tried to replace those. There's an approach method. Um, this tree, you know, I, I feel like I recognize this tree. I've seen this digital asset a number of times. It just doesn't look like a realistic tree and it's the focal point of the shot. So that's something that I would probably come in and change, right? Um, and I happen to have a pine tree in my library of assets. If you're on the newest, if you keep your Photoshop updated, there's a libraries section here. And in the libraries section, uh, you can store PNG images, which are great for doing photo manipulation. So that's something I'll probably do there. It's actually my pine tree and you can see it's got a couple little problems with it, but we can make it work pretty well in this shot and just kind of overlay it over the top of this existing tree and that'll make a big difference. The other thing is because this is so such low resolution and the original image that was, the original material that was used for this texture on the wall, it's just, is kind of ill-defined. I would probably want to bring this out. So let's start with that. I'm going to start by just making a copy of the background layer. I'm just hit control J for that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, I could either add a brightness contrast layer or a curves adjustment layer. And so the curves adjustment layer, all I'm doing is I want to kind of bring out, well, I'm going to just drop this, the darker segments down in the curve. Um, so that we get a little bit more darkness on this shot. And then I'm going to do something in uh, layer styles. And one way to get to layer styles that's really easy is I'm going to double click on my curves adjustment layer. Once I double click, it's going to bring up this subsequent menu. And in here, I can use some blend if. Now, what I want to do is I want to blend if the underlying layer has either um, black or white involved. So you can see as I drag this slider, my curves adjustment kind of disappears and it disappears if the underlying layer is within uh, the true black all the way up to the level of gray that I'm selecting here. Now you can do this on a color channel by color channel basis, but for this purpose, I'm just gonna adjust the black. And you can see just adjusting just part of this image, I'm actually gonna take the white channel bring this all the way over and there we go. This is actually what I want. I want just a little bit of definition here. And then if I hold my alt key, I'm gonna split this slider and kind of fade it back. And essentially what I've done is I've added some definition to this siding, right? But I've also added some problem areas in, you know, in other parts of the scene. So, and I'm gonna to get to that here in a minute, but this is what I wanted. I wanted a little bit more definition in that siding. From here, we already have a built-in mask when we created this. So I'm gonna use my brush tool from here and brush out. You can see here, I'm gonna adjust my brush there. Um, I'm actually gonna just invert my mask. Control I inverts my masks. And then I can come in here and hit X. And all X does is switch from my a white foreground color to a black foreground color, vice versa. And then I can come in here and paint this in, right? Very easily. Now, again, if I was commissioned for this job, I'd probably do take a little bit more time, make sure that I was very precise in doing this. But you can see there very quickly, and we'll just turn this off and turn it back on again, what happened? Got a lot of definition in this. So made a huge difference right off the bat. So that's nice. We touched on that, that's great. Let's do a couple other things. Let's go ahead and drop that tree in here and see if I can work with it. I'm gonna drop this image right on top here and kind of scale it to what I need it to be. I'm just gonna take elements from this tree. We're gonna do basically the same thing. We're gonna be using a mask to kind of paint this tree out of the scene. Also, we can see the underlying layer. We have, um, it's, it's good to understand where your light's coming from in the scene. And we can tell that the light is coming from left to right and it's casting shadow from left to right. So when I'm looking at this tree asset, my lighting is actually kind of diffused coming from somewhat like everywhere, which is a great asset. So if you're searching PNG assets, so you can drop them in here and, 
and affect the scene, it's nice to have something that's evenly lit. Or you might want to take the time to fix it and make sure it's evenly lit. So I'm going to drop in a new adjustment layer, and it's going to be an exposure adjustment layer. And all I'm looking for is the tree here. So in my properties panel in Photoshop, down at the bottom, we've got a bottom like options tray, if you will. And um, unlike Chief Architect, I don't know all the proper terminology for all the elements within uh, Photoshop. So I'm just going to call this a bottom adjustment uh, tray. So if I click on this little icon here, and let me get my pointer options up so we can magnify this. And also, let me practice my, I need to practice my voice. My inflection is not, not so much monotone. We got to get, we got to work on our vocals. Okay, so I've got pointer options here. That means I can zoom in and we're going to look at this little icon right there. That's what I'm trying to click, that one right there. And so what that does is it makes it so that my, oh, what just happened? Oh, interesting. My F12 key does magnification. It also looks like it reverts to, <laughs> it reverts to uh, the original document. That's not going to work. <laughs> so exposure adjustment layer. I just want to affect the layer below. And now I'm going to adjust the exposure of this tree, right? There we go. So we can see I pumped up the exposure of this tree. And then I'm going to paint that exposure out in the mask itself. Another thing I might want to do is I might want to leave the exposure of all the dark sections of this tree alone. So we can, same way we did layer styles on that curves adjustment layer, we can do the same thing on the exposure adjustment layer, which means I don't want that exposure to adjust the darker sections of this tree. I want, to want those to remain a little bit dark. So, and as soon as I split the two by holding alt and splitting these two sliders, then I've got I don't have a hard point for where that exposure adjustment adjusts. I have kind of a soft gradient uh, change from where I've got that adjustment slider. So there we go. I'm affecting less of the darker parts of this image. And that means very easily I can take my brush tool and make sure that I'm in the mask and invert my brush and paint out parts of this tree so that I'm getting some color casting on just one side of the tree. Isn't that cool? And you can come in here and really um, detail it. I just hit X to invert this back so I could paint this back in. Hit X again, kind of paint it back out. Just catch some of these branches just a little bit. Uh, it's nice if you maybe have some shaped brushes. I have a bunch of different shaped brushes that are you know free to download all over the internet. Um, so I might grab something, some kind of funny funky sampled brush that has a, a particular size to it. And that way I can come in here and just kind of spatter in some of these little light spots there. Makes a big difference, right? Kind of adds to that realism. Next thing is I might want to just mask out kind of the top of this tree. I'll use the same brush to do it as well. So. And that's just adjusting this exposure. I need to make sure that I'm in the image itself. So in the image itself, I'm going to add a mask. And then I'm going to paint out this tree until we get to that underlying tree. Now you notice that underlying tree is very, very green. And we're going to have to fix that in our tree, right? So that we kind of blend the two. Here we go. So. Um, at this point, I just want to group my tree. So I'm going to select the multiple layers, group that, and even double click and name it so that we're keeping the scene nice and organized. And then from here, I want to add another adjustment layer. Now, I could just do a hue saturation layer, kind of play with the level of that green. I want to make sure that I'm clicking that same button that just makes it so that it applies uh, to the layer just below it, right? And because we have an exposure adjustment layer that's applying to the layer below it, if we do the same thing with this hue saturation layer, it's still going to go back to that that uh, bottom level of the stack within this group. So now I can sit here and play with 
color grading, pump up the saturation. Maybe I need to pump up the lightness. Keep in mind, we can do that same thing with layer styles where we're just affecting the upper channels there. It does look like there's quite a bit of saturation and we really want to get to that same kind of color green if we can. The other thing I'll notice is that this, our new tree, just this is a pixel density thing. Our new tree is a lot more defined than the tree that's underlying. So you might want to come in here and change this from a, a smart object to and, and rasterize the layer. And that way I can use something like the blur tool. Maybe the blur tool is sent to like 20% strength. And we're just going to blur this tree just a little bit. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this tree. You're just getting to the ideas of how I might approach this um, from a conceptual standpoint. But if I was really wanted to detail this out, I would actually take the time to truly detail this in, in a way that um, blended with the tree below it. One more thing you can do, um, aside from the hue saturation adjustment layer, is you can do a color balance or a channel mixer. And a channel mixer, um, if we apply it to those layers below again, might be able to get closer to that tree. There we go, that's getting a lot closer. Now it's a little bit better of a blend. Come back, touch up just a couple more details. And we're getting to something that's pretty close to accurate, right? So, all right, so now I wanna move on from here, get into a couple other things. This is actually looking like a pretty decent scene just with those few couple of adjustments. So next thing I wanna do is I wanna get into my camera raw filters. And so I'm gonna make a couple of stamps. And by doing that, I'm gonna to get to the, the highest layer in the stack. I'm gonna hit Control Shift Alt E and I'll do it again. And so we've essentially made a compilation of every, all the adjustments we've made into one image. Now this is no longer, um, we can no longer edit that tree without bringing that tree group up in the layer stack. So now we've just got a base image here that we're working with. And I'm gonna hit Control Shift A and I wanna apply a camera raw filter. Now this green is a little bit distracting. I might go for a different color palette. I'm gonna look at my various different preset filters, just take a quick browse through. You can see here just how dynamic things can happen. I like to run through my presets just to get an idea of um, sometimes one of these presets sparks an idea for me. So um, I notice in this orange, I like that there's a vignette happening. Um, and the vignette is kind of kind of nice for the scene because it really helps us just focus on the house. Keeping in mind, any adjustment I make, I can kind of blend back if I need to. So let's just run through these. There's a couple of them that, that might be interesting. Um, this one, somewhat of a desaturated look, that might be nice and then blend back with the original. Um, any number of kind of dramatic looks that you might run through. I think it might be interesting to pull out some of that green, drop that level of the green down a little bit. Might also be interesting to get um, some higher contrast in the foreground to kind of make the house pop. So we'll start with a couple things here. And I might even brush in some features. So let me just start with one. Actually, we'll just start with a full adjustment here. I'm gonna um, get into my color mixer and I wanna take this green a little bit down. There we go. Now it's not so bright, not so harsh. Yellow's a little bit up maybe. We're getting some popping with the yellows if we bring those up. Might wanna bring you know warmth back in with the orange tones, who knows? Um, I will say, It'd be nice if we kind of bring in some texture and clarity, get some of these features to pop since we're a little bit pixelated. And I might want to bring that black channel up as well as dehaze down and kind of brighten this whole scene across levels here. And you can mess with this for quite a while. I get stuck on some of this stuff too. So if you find a particular workflow that you like, I'd say stick with it, save your preset, make sure you come back to it, 
Um, I'm adjusting the midtones right now. It's adding a little bit of yellow to them. And then you can adjust your balance sliders to kind of fade that back into the scene as you see fit. I just like to slide this back and forth twice. So I tend to catch something that I kind of like from the scene, right? So the great thing is after you apply one of these camera raw filters, you can always come back in your opacity slider for that layer and blend it back with the original and kind of catch something in between that might be nice. I know something I like about the foreground was that when we hit a vignette, it was nice. It made the, the house pop. So instead of doing a vignette, I might just add another exposure adjustment layer, drop the exposure kind of down, invert the mass that it created by control I, and then use a brush tool to kind of paint in a high opacity, kind of paint in that, that exposure and just kind of shape the scene. Now, the last thing I would probably do is do a sky replacement in our edit menu, sky replacement. And we'll just stick with one because um, I want to show what you can do with the sky replacement. A lot of people just do the uh, sky replacement and leave it at that. Um, like this particular sky doesn't really look good with this scene. But what you can do is you can commit that sky replacement and it actually creates a folder for you with the layer stack. And from that layer stack, we can get to that top level here, which is the sky with a mask applied to it. And we can add a hue saturation adjustment layer and we can kind of play with this. So we can bring in yellows, we can bring in blues, we can do any number of things here. We can pump saturation up, bring it down, or we can play with lightness as well. And so long as we're just applying it to the sky level itself, look at that, that's kind of interesting. Now we've got some things happening in the background here. They're just nice to see, right? I'd say overall, the scene's a little too warm. That's okay. Let's do one more stamp. I'm gonna be done with this scene so we can move on and, and get to another one. But from this stamp, I wanna use a plugin that I have, which is Topaz makes a great set of tools that you can use uh, to do any number of things. I bought the full suite. I think it was a good price with the full suite. So something I'll do is I might do a sharpen AI. So I wanna make another copy of this layer because I might blend whatever effect I do on top of the layer underneath. So here in my filters, Topaz Labs, I'm gonna do a sharpen AI. And this takes a second. It's going to analyze the scene. You have any number of different adjustments that you can do. We'll just leave it as default so that you can see what it's doing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. You're going to see that this effect is a little too strong for the scene. Um, but there we go. It sharpened it up quite a bit. If we kind of do some pixel peaking. Yeah, it definitely sharpened the scene. Now, keep in mind, I can do a lot more in post edit if the base image had a lot more resolution. I can make things look a lot more realistic. So a couple things here. That looks pretty good. Again, you can blend back the opacity back with the original scene. So something cut in between that ultra sharp. And we're starting to get to a pretty good looking image. Now this di image didn't need a lot of editing, you know, in the first place, but you can certainly make some improvements. I encourage people along the way to go take a look at actual photographs and emulate those photographs and then look for the assets that you need to create those um, those images in the same way. So if we were to have those lights on here in the front of the scene, I might add any number of flares that I have. So here's a flare that I have. We turn it to screen mode. Now we've got this flare. We can push it onto this light here and then utilizing that same technique in layer styles, we can make it so that it's not so um, effective on the black channels, right? And then blend it back. And then we've got a little bit of bloom happening with that light. So a uh, bunch of different effects that you can do in that way. We can, of course, bring in a bunch of bokeh. We can bring in a bunch of, you know, bigger type flares. Look at this one. Bring this one in, change your blend mode to screen. Right. So now we've got this, this effect going on. We can rotate it if we want to. We can stretch it out. We can make it, you know, kind of obscure if we want to any number of things. And then you can also keep in mind, not only can we do our blend with stack, right? 
but we can also mask this out, create a mask. And if we didn't want the, the harshness here in the middle, but we wanted some of the effect of the other parts here, we can still maintain these little particles and effects, right? So any number of things you can do with a shot like this. All right, let's get on to another one. See if I can get to where I need to be here. Let's see, Facebook, there we go. Let's do, let's do this one from Pat, Patrick. I don't know how you pr pronounce your last name, Patrick, but this is a pretty good one. I can tell you right off the bat what I want to do here. Um, I want to make that roof look a lot more realistic. This one actually has a um, big room for improvement. That last one was pretty well done. Um, and, and no offense meant at all. <laughs> uh, but we can see here, this roof just doesn't quite look realistic. Roofs have a lot of like purlin noise, like a lot of things going on that um, um, that make it you know look unique across the board. And it's hard to do that with a seamless texture. I have a really good seamless texture for this kind of stuff. But uh, the other thing is this grass is just too long. It just looks unrealistic. The blades of the grass are way too heavy. So let's take a look at this one. Um, I think his sky is appropriate. So we might not touch the sky. So maybe we'll just touch the grass, touch the roof, and do a camera raw filter and call it a day. So let me save this. And then we'll just drag it into Photoshop when we can anyways. Sometimes it's got to load up. There we go. Okay, so I want to start with that roof. And so what I'm going to do is I might actually even do like a pre mass thing by using the Select Object Tool, Object Selection Tool. And it takes a little while. We're going to get some lag. You guys might be able to hear my voice, but we're going to get some screen lag because the object selection tool um, hogs our, our graphics um, hardware acceleration. There we go. So it made a selection of the roof only. Now, if I hit Control J, what that's going to do is just make a copy of only the roof. That's it. So that's kind of a nice thing. And then if I hit Control when I select this layer, I can even make a mask out of that if I wanted to so that I can use that mask somewhere else. A cool little trick. Now from here, I want to add on, let's probably just do an exposure adjustment layer again. So exposure adjustment layer, we're going to drop that exposure down until it shows a pretty heavy effect there, which I like. And then we can go ahead and hit control, drag this mask from the layer below onto our exposure mask, right? So we've just put that mask onto the roof only. Now I can invert that mask. And now from here, and, and mind you, I want to make that just affect the, the layer below. Now from here, I can paint in exposure. Now I'm going to use my brush tool and I'm going to get to, I'm probably going to get to like a cloud. Let's do a cloud brush. Soft cloud, something like this, maybe. And so what I'm going to do is I'm painting in noise. And if I just keep inverting and kind of painting this until I get something that looks what we might want to see on a roof line, here's my next part. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that same trick with layer styles. And so the underlying layer, you can see here, we're just affecting just the shadows of the roof, right? Same thing. If we go the other way, we're just affecting the highlights of the roof. The other thing we might want to do is change our blend mode. Now, if we take our time with this, we can actually create a pretty realistic looking roof with this method. That blend mode's a little off. I think I like hard light or overlay. And we're gonna have to fix the mask just a little bit. 
Now I want to keep this interesting. So I'm going to move on from this and we'll come back to it to kind of detail it before we send it to camera raw, um, because I want to show you how we adjust the grass. And look at that. That's, that's actually getting pretty close to what I want here. And I of course can come in and repaint with that brush tool, right? Have less of an effect, paint it in where you want to. Now I want to get to a regular round brush so that I make sure that I mask out the front of this. Right, we don't want it affecting that, uh, that fascia. Okay, next up, let's do something about this grass. Now I have a grass asset. And I'm bringing this over to the main page so you guys can kind of see what I'm looking at here. I have a bunch of assets that um, I have available to me, image assets. So, and when I go and look for a new image asset to use for some, what I call photo manipulation, I always save my assets and organize them. So what I'm looking for here is grass. And here we go, this is a pretty good image. And we can see the angle of the grass for the perspective of the shot. We need to kind of truncate this down. You can see right there, it's kind of what we want. And in fact, I'm gonna copy this and then kind of flip it about itself. Maybe we'll rotate it just a little bit so it's going the right uh, direction to match that existing image. We can blend the two in just a minute. And we might even make some clone stamp adjustments. So there we go. Um, I'm gonna use the stamp tool. First of all, I'm gonna join these two layers. Merge layers, okay. And then I'll use that stamp tool and I'll pick a spot and just kind of stamp this around. We just want to keep this pattern repeating, this grass texture repeating, and then we're going to apply it to the scene in a way that's helpful. And you're going to see this shot kind of come to life. It's helpful to have kind of a sporadic brush that does randomized things because That'll help just sell this grass look on the whole. This takes a little bit of time. And when I'm done with this, I should re-save this as a new asset, right? There we go. Now I'm gonna apply a mask to it. And let me start with a regular uh, hard round brush again. And I wanna make sure that, let's see. Oh, I'm in the stamp tool. There we go, brush tool. There we go, hardline brush. And I'll just cut this back away from the edge here of his existing grass and away from the fence line so they can see everywhere that I need to apply this. Now there's a little bit of color grading that needs to happen here. Also keep in mind my opacity was set to 80%, it wasn't 100, so I need to come back and um, have this at 100 so that I'm really knocking out all this, this new grass texture. So again, we've got some color grading. It might be helpful to group our grass image so that we're just, you know, kind of keeping organized. And let's get into a color balance adjustment layer and make sure that it's applying only to the layer below. And then get this grass a little closer to the existing. Again, you can, you know, play with hue saturation as well. I think that's probably better than the color balance. Let's do that. Let's do a hue saturation adjustment layer. Affect the layer below, pull the saturation out of this grass. There we go, that's blending really nicely. Look at that, pretty, pretty slick. Then I'm gonna get in here and do what I call um, pixel peaking and get into that, um, that mask layer again, invert the mask so that I can draw this right up to the fence line. We're gonna leave some of these high strands in there. See, we've got a little bit of a faded overlay there that needs to go away. A 
I'd probably touch up this roof line a little bit more, spend a little bit more time on it, but just to keep you guys interested, we'll, we'll avoid that. I want to do a little bit of stamping here. You can see there's some, um, some funny things here going on. So we'll just stamp this over. Do one more time. There we go. And all in all, this is looking pretty good. So let's do that. Um, stamp the whole scene. Let's do a control shift a to edit the whole scene. And then we'll do a couple things. Um, again, I like to just kind of preview through um, different adjustments. Look at that. That looks sharp right away. Um, so that's a good one. Keep in mind, orange was the filter name. It's crazy what you can do with this very quickly. Um, make a scene come to life. Probably going to ditch, uh, shrink down vintage. That doesn't really make sense for what we're looking at here. Vintage doesn't really have any place to be in um, the architectural world for a preset. I'm looking at a couple different things. I'm looking at the grass texture, but I'm also looking at that house. I mean, the house is, is our main subject matter, right? We want, want to make sure that that house is looking good. So I, I kind of like the vignette on this. So let's stick with that. I'm going to go with red, get into my basic tab. You see clarity is pumped up. If we pump it up even more, it gets a little too harsh. We can pump up texture a little bit and make this pop. Dehaze again is going to kind of lighten that whole scene just a little bit. Um, can be helpful sometimes if you're, um, your blacks are kind of overwhelming. You can do an adjustment curve. You can see that the red actually brought in a curve by itself. Uh, color mixing curve. Uh, might want to take that green down a notch. Yeah. Um, you know what? Someone just pinned, uh, I'm going to pin this concrete texture. Yes, you can absolutely get in with a concrete texture. I have another image I think I saw that I, we might do that on. So we'll save that for the next one. Um, I like to get into color grading. I find color grading to be a fascinating tool. Um, sometimes I have some fantastic results from adding color into the shadow channels, uh, making things pop in a certain way. Um, I have to be careful because my monitor um, does not show the same way that my phone shows and I have an iPhone and I feel like that's a common thing for social media is you're going to be looking on an iPhone. So um, sometimes I need to check myself on that, make sure that my monitor is kind of in sync with my phone as well. So something to keep in mind. I'm going to re revert these all back optics you can get into you know um this was shot with a wide field of view i can tell um and so it might be nice to reverse that bubble effect right because we've got this I'm, you know i'm gonna make it exaggerated this is kind of what's happening with a wide field of view but we can adjust this the other way and get a little bit of parallelism out of the shot which might be nice right and Photoshop will automatically fill these areas, um, which is fine. Play with this vignette, maybe bring it in a little bit more. I think for the most part, this is looking pretty good. You can pump up sharpening if you want to. Yeah, not bad looking. Again, I would have spent more time in that roof, making sure that roof really was dialed in. So something to keep in mind. All right, let's go on to another one. There's the original image, by the way. So if you're curious where we ended up, here's our new image. Right? There's the original. Not bad. I wonder what happens if we just do an after the fact curves play with this. Could have probably done a sky replacement, but I don't know. I didn't mind it. Okay. So I want to get into this one. This is another really low resolution one. So that part's 
a little bit challenging, but let's just go ahead and grab this. So talking about a concrete texture, um, I would probably do something with this driveway to liven it up. First of all, the thing that bugs me right off the bat, um, composition's pretty good here, but immediately I almost want to crop I almost want to um, crop this whole scene out, uh, this whole lower section out, because it's not interesting. This part's interesting. That's what's interesting. I don't want to see that side of the driveway, though. This is what I want to see. House is center of the shot. But let's go ahead and leave it um, the way it was originally. There's also just this, the shadowing is just a little off along this line. So I'm going to come in here. Let's control J it. And I might use my stamp tool and then... Maybe I'll get a shape stamp. Um, I like that one we were using earlier, but maybe we'll use any number of things here. Let's see. This is kind of interesting. You could turn this one. Turn it like that. There we go. So we can stamp this and kind of, oops. Oh, this is a randomized one. Good to have for some things, but not for this. That's kind of a random one too. See if we can get close, but not quite. Basically, all I'm doing is breaking this this hard line up a little bit, right? That's all I wanted to do. Just do a little bit here. Goofed this up, didn't I? Goofed it up. Well, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, the other thing you can do is you can actually um, select this whole driveway, if you will, um, which can be challenging. You might use the pen tool. So if I want to do create a new shadow that's um, really sharp and kind of automated, I can go through here and trace this. If you're familiar with the pen tool, it's it's great for uh, manipulation like this and cutting things perfectly because we can get these arcs really easily. I'm not going to do a perfect job on this, but that's okay. You can also really zoom in on this. Pixel peep. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all this back here because I want to create an automatic shadow from this. So we're making a selection. And if we just do a new layer or if we just control J this, which is copying that layer and then get into layer styles, we can add a drop shadow. And let's just show you what that did. Look what it did. Created a shadow on this hard edge. So let's say we want to adjust this drop shadow. We've got any number of adjustments. Distance, we can change that angle of the shadow. Let's knock that distance back down. We can change this kind of the spread. We can change the opacity of it. So we're just making kind of an even shadow there now. Um, and of course, we can just uh, do that blending options as well. So underlying layer, we can make so the shadow just doesn't make any existing darkness darker, or, or in fact, in this case, might want it so that it, yeah, doesn't make the existing dark that much darker. Somewhere in there, right there. And then that shadow can go up a little bit in opacity. Let's take a look what this looks like. Yeah, so that kind of created an effect, right? Of course, if you wanted to, you can change the opacity back down from there. So little detail like that. Now let's um, do what someone suggested, which is add a concrete texture. So let me get back into my assets. And um, might be that you go and look for, let's see, I might have roads or driveways. Let me see if I've got that. Roads. 
I do have roads. Here we go. Let's just drop this in so it is. All right. So this is a good one. Let's shrink it down. It's a little overscaled. Um, for the most part, it's got direction. You might hold control key and kind of skew this to match the direction of our road, right? And then I might copy this over another time. Oops, pen tool still. Something like that. Let's join the two layers. Let's put a mask on it. And you can just kind of paint this out roughly so we get an idea. If I really want to detail stuff um, with like a stylus, I have another machine that I use. This is my main machine, but sometimes I want to detail out with a stylus. Now it's just a matter of just kind of clicking, shift click, shift click draws your straight line, and then shaping this. And then we're gonna use that stamp tool to repeat that texture, right? And then the last thing is, this is too heavy. It's too heavy, it's a little too, um, it's too large in areas. So I would probably take some time to kind of stamp this out the way I want it to. Let's get into the main texture again. Stamp it. The only thing over here is we ditch some of the shadows. You got to be wary of that, right? You got to recreate those shadows. I'm going to recreate that shadow right there. And then I'm going to change the blending mode and see how good we can get out of this, right? Change the, the blending mode to something that, yeah, that's... It's actually not bad because then we can turn this. Oh, that's pretty good. And we turn the opacity down if we want to. And we're getting to a more varied looking result. All right, we've got a little bit of texture in there. Let's color burn. And of course, we can do what can we do? We can do exposure again. You can see this, it's a lot of the same workflow over and over again. So it's nice to just familiar, familiarize yourself with these tools. That was just the noise. That exposure is um, messing with that shot, so. probably just say overlay is pretty good and then soften it up I don't know I could spend a little while kind of tweaking on that um, other than this the only other thing I might do is add a foreground element so we got this tree over here and it, and it looks a little bit fake otherwise this shot looks pretty good whoever um, did this originally let me see let's give them a little bit of credit here Casey Jensen um, it's pretty good so I'm gonna get back into my libraries. I'm gonna drop this tree asset in here. Kind of scale it up. And then just noting, you know, where's our sun coming from? And you might just blur that out a little bit. Do a Gaussian blur. You know, now we're kind of framing the shot just a little bit. Might be interesting. Let's do an overall stamp. 
And I always finish off with one of these filters. I just do. Um, it just makes such a huge difference. Again, if I had the full resolution here, I could do um, something even better. I mean, that legitimately looks like a picture right there. It looks like a low resolution picture. <laughs> so I might say yes, and then back this opacity back down a little bit and then stamp it again. And we could do a sky replacement. Though I don't know if it even needs a sky replacement, but I actually like the blue sky effect. I think that was a good call. Yeah, what are you guys thinking so far? Picking up any any notes, any cool stuff? Any questions about what we're looking at? Um, skies can be challenging because you need to know where your sun's coming from so that you're matching that effect, right? So. Uh, we kind of know that the sun's coming from the left shot. So this background replacement will not work for this shot unless we um, mask this sun out in a way that's um, effective. So, and you could let's just hit OK. And we know what sky replacement is doing. So we've got a, an image and it has a mask. So you can actually take um, the stamp tool if you wanted to. You could also um, just make a a selection here and use something like spot healing or patch tool so i can bring the patch tool over somewhere that it looks like it might blend a little bit um, get the direction of these clouds going in the right way it's kind of which might be challenging let's try that something like that right there do it again do it again You know, now we have something looking a little bit more unique. Obviously some problems here, but there we go. Quickly fix those problems. Do a couple of these edits. And you can also use our spot healing brush. Oh, not enough source pixels, interesting. Okay. So pretty done with this one. Catch a replay or two. Yeah, I know I'm moving really fast. I know I am um, trying to catch a, you know as many of these scenes as I can within this hour. Nice. Thank you, Susan. Um, Susan, you've been, um, you know, been putting in a lot of input for me. So thank you. I appreciate it. All right, let's see if I can pack one more of these in here in this hour. We might run a little bit long. I'm, I'm not opposed to that. Oh, um, I need to do this one because this person took the time to send me their file. So this was the shot that they gave me, and I asked them to send me their chief file because there's just more I would do to this before I even sent this out to render. Um, and so that's important is, is making sure your shot is set up to the point where you there's like a, an algorithm going on in my mind when I'm rendering is that I'm rendering um, so that I'm covering all the things that I need to get the final job done without needing to um, spend any more time than I want to be spending. So, and I mean, this has all got to be within a budget. So I know that Susan sent me this and it's right here. So we'll just extract it, open it up. So we're going to do a little bit of prep in, in uh, Chief first. So we are going to run a little bit long for this. Um, there we go. Here's a plan file. Um, first thing that happens when someone sends me a plan file, I'm going to look in the project browser, and I'm going to hope that you've got a camera saved there, and you don't. So I wish you did. Um, that lets me know that you have a particular composition that you would like to have for your project. So save your cameras if you're going to go send it to a rendering artist. That's a big, that's a big perk. <laughs> that's a, I always appreciate that. Um, oh, and you know, if we're going to render, we need to make sure that model's fixed. <laughs> Look at that. That's a funny one. Uh, yeah, let's see if we can just do a this right there and maybe get to a quick solution. There we go, that was a pretty quick solution. Um, let's look at this texture first, the standing seam. I know that Chief's standing seams aren't all that great. 
Um, I have a couple of good ones. I have a great one in particular that I might touch. So let me try that first. Oh, and there's a pattern to this. I'm going to say no pattern. It's going to slow my uh, system up. Uh, texture source. Let me get into my materials. And I have in my materials, I have roofing, standing seam. Let's do this. We're going to do this one. We're going to blend with texture. And then I've got a normal that I've pumped a bunch of time into. And I think it needs to be about 90 inches or so. It's a different type of standing seam, so it's not right for the seam, but it's very good looking when we hit our PBR ray trace. Let's just kick that on real quick. Yeah, it's got a, a good standoff, so that's a good one. And it does look like this was set to be a metal texture. I didn't check that, but I should have. Um, I have a really good roof texture, so let me just look up RD roof. This is my comp shingle roof. Um, we're going to be a little bit off the original here just because these are um, the textures I have available to me and I don't want to spend time modifying. But there you go. There's my roof. It's got a lot more um, information in it. Um, I also have a brick texture that will work better than this brick texture. Some of you have my old rustic brick texture. And then I think I have a brown modified version of this. Um, that I can grab. So we'll do um, a material adjustment and I'm just going to change that texture source. Get into my brick catalog and a rustic brick. Yeah, and I've got a brown rustic brick. There we go. Um, something kind of funny there. It looks like the shade, the shade maybe was painted with that brick texture. Oh, and this is someone that doesn't use a 3D connection mouse. I know that because it's bouncing off the walls when I get close to it. Go get a 3D mouse. They work great. And you can kind of float around like I'm doing right now. Oh, let's see. I have that in plan mode, so that's going to paint the, the brick outside. I need to undo. Hey, that's my rug. How'd you get that rug? <laughs> I must have given that out at some point. Very cool. I like seeing uh, my assets in, in people's uh, models. That's really cool. That's so fun for me. Um, we've got a bunch of this, uh, these grass tufts here that are kind of on our pavement. Just take a look at the, I'm just going to delete these. That's okay. And anything else I would touch on this? Oh, yes, I would. Let's do my grass instead. So it's good to get some really good materials built out. It just makes a huge difference for the overall scene. Look at that. Big change already. Um, oh, this is a spline driveway. Uh, in our edit menu, we can convert this to a polyline object. And from there, we can kind of soften these using our fillet tool if we want to. So I'm going to hit my F key. Probably would have converted this back to a polyline and, and upped um, the number of convert curve to polyline. That would make a big difference. Anyways, let's send this to a render. Let's get a little composition going. Um, I like to edit the active view when I'm doing exteriors. I want something like 35 degree field of view or less. We're going to get a lot more parallelism out of that. Right. That's looking a lot better. Maybe they want it from kind of a sideways shot. You know, Study composition on other shots so that you can mimic that composition, right? Um, we can see here we've got some funny things with the roof um, not being built. So let me just get into framing and I'm going to build all framing and we're going to make sure that we've got everything turned on and hopefully there's no problems in the model that show up. So maybe that will fill in, in our, um, under our eaves. Um, there we go. We've got a lot of green in this. So probably going to edit that out in Photoshop instead of trying to edit it out in uh, Chief. I know a lot of people are always trying to um, adjust 
color hue and casting in chief sometimes it's just so much quicker and easier to do it in photoshop so here we go alt f e for export p for picture and then we can do our use active window size which is going to make it low resolution maybe i'll pump this up to 2048 i don't know what this person's sample rate is so let me check that first Daytime backdrop intensity, that's fine. And then 1,000 um, is probably fine for uh, exterior export. It could even be 600. In fact, let's undersample it because I'll uh, show you another tool that I have. So I'm going to set uh, export samples to 300, but we're going to pump up the resolution. So Alt-F-E-P gets me here, and maybe we'll make it a 5,000 resolution image. And we're going to... Uh, leave transparent background checked because we could do a background replacement. We'll go ahead and put this in send and delete. And I'm not sure who did this one. Who was this? This was Jen Harrison. So Jen Harrison. Won't take that long because we pumped the sample rate up. Because we pumped up the resolution, Chief goes to a render in a quadrant by quadrant basis. I almost call this a bucket render. It's like a large bucket render. Um, so just sit tight for a minute. You can see all the fireflies that happen, especially in our transparent materials. That's because we're undersampled and that's and that area is under lit. I might have I might have just ditched the trees that were in this um, to add in my own tree image assets. That might have been a, a good move to do, probably a good move to do. A nice way to break up those concrete driveway lines is just to use that stamp tool with a shaped brush that's shaped like grass and then take a sample of the grass and stamp it um, and start just drawing the line alongside that driveway so that you have what looks like realistic grass overlaying that um, that driveway. So there we go. That's done. Let's save this image. Why not? This is going to be camera one. By default, we can close down Chief and save it. Um, that person is not working in X14, so they're not going to ever get that file back. <laughs> And then let's open that up. Love working with high resolution images here. It's going to be in my JPEG files. Should have deleted all these materials beforehand, but now I need to find it. Um, what did we call that? We called it Jen Harrison. Jen Harrison Render. Okay. There we go. So there's our transparent background. Right, so we know already right off the top, we can get into image assets again. And I have backgrounds. I don't have a ton actually, to tell you the truth. Um, I only have a, a small se segment of them right now. I, I lost a ton, so. Um, and we can try a couple different ones. Drop this in, hit enter. Oh, that thing's tiny, look at that. Um, drop this in, hit enter. That's not gonna be a good one. Um, use that one before it's kind of cool and if you're unfamiliar uh, we do have my search engines you can always do an image asset search from my website and it will limit to specific sites and search queries so we could do forest the forest and it's going to get me to a particular set of sites that um, that I like to to use so from here um, I don't have a, a resolution parameter built into this that might happen in the future but I don't know an image like this might be interesting the other thing you can always do is just search for forest in your Google image search and then get into the oh not forest gump just forest 
then get into tools and oh images first then tools uh, set your size to something greater than two megapixels and you might even want something that has a png element to it so um, any number of different things you could do there and forest might have been not the best you could do something like washington woods <laughs> something like that to pick up a background image that's going to work for you. And you can kill some hours doing this. So I always encourage you when you found an asset that seems to work for your scene, please make sure to save it, catalog it, um, tag it, detail it. So let me get back into the shot and we'll do a couple of things. We're going to bring our layer to the top of the stack and we can see all those other layers in the background. We might be able to mess with some of these. Let's just take a look what this does for the scene that's kind of interesting we can just stick around a hillside range right there um might be able to duplicate that over and flip it about itself oops i didn't duplicate it let's try duplicating it first and flip it about itself to kind of continue that and we might be able to adjust that in a way that's meaningful Be fearless, by the way, when you're editing. Be fearless. Know that you can fix anything you want to fix. So I can copy this again and edit it back on itself again just to get that tree line a little bit fixed so that I can mask this section out and kind of play with that mask going back and forth. Oh, we got some lag right now. Yeah, I can mask this back and forth until I get this all to line up the way I want it to, right? That's that's absolutely something that you're capable of doing just by playing around a little bit. Change the color from white to a gray. Something like that. Yeah. So I just say be fearless. You can make any number of things work. I'm not going to worry about the background right now. I'm going to hit my Alt key and then click on uh, the layer visibility so that we just get to that main shot. And we're going to do a couple things to kind of improve this shot. Now, um, one is I kind of want to mask the building itself, right? So maybe I'll use that same subject selection tool. And keep in mind, I'm on the wrong layer. I made a mistake. So we're selecting things on a layer that I don't actually want to select from, which is why it didn't work that well. So let's shift D select. Let's get to the correct layer. Use that subject map. Now see if we can't grab that building only. There we go. We got the building only that did a pretty good job Control J makes a new layer and I can do, actually it didn't do a pretty good job. Yeah, it kind of did an okay job. Not really though. Let's try that again. Yeah, we missed some things in that selection. Here's that selection. I can add to the selection by using the selection tool, holding my shift key. That gives me a plus so that I can add to the selection, get more of this building in here. Okay. Then I'm going to shift J. Now, once I've done that, I want to group this. I want to group this because I want to be able to edit the building separate from other areas, right? So one of the things that I'd like to do is to be able to pull out some of the green in this. So we can get into our image adjustments and um, maybe hue saturation, maybe color balance. So it doesn't need to be a smart adjustment. We can come in here and, and do some color balance. The other thing you can do is you can always do a camera raw filter. Sometimes it's easier to, to work in this because it's easy for me to go to the color mixer and bring that green channel down and then get a little bit more of that brown and, and orange back in there. That's a nice, quick, easy way of doing that. Now it's going to affect the, you know, the foliage in the front, the bushes in the front, but I don't know. seems to be okay. Um, probably a exposure adjustment layer. I'd probably spend a lot more time on this model, though. There's so many similar colors. 
Exposure brings out a lot in this. I will say that. Here's the trick I was talking about with the grass. Let's hit that stamp tool. Uh, let's see, I need to hit shift stamp. No. Oh, we're in something else here. Let's go there. Stamp tool. There we go. And And this is nice if you have a brush that does a, just a little bit of like texture to it. In fact, I'll probably pick a different brush. I need like an actual grass brush. Nice. Um, I think I have a fur brush. Does it have any questions? Let me know. It's a pointed tail end of fur. Oh, that's kind of that's kind of an interesting one. So I always like to stamp over and then stamp back. Oh, and you know what? I didn't do this as a, a mask and I should have. But yeah, you can get, get in here and detail this out. Make some real finite adjustments there. That makes a big difference. Um, we could do a sky replacement straight from here if we wanted to. Sometimes you can grab a sky replacement that has a background in it as well. And that can be a really quick and easy way to drop in. Um, this scene wants to have a background here, so we might just add just a solid color and that makes it easy for it to grab. Um, so do a solid color. Drop it under this layer and then we can stamp this whole thing and do a sky replacement. And then if you have a sky replacement that has like a mountain backdrop, it can be a very quick and easy way of doing this because the sky replacement tool does a really good job. So, and you can adjust this, you can shift the edge, you can fade it, you can scale it. Um, the scale in this case is not going to be very helpful. <laughs> Look at this one, whole night scene. It is interesting that it's shading down. I can't quite remember how to adjust that. I think I actually just get to shift it up. Yeah, I do. Could shift it up to about there. Kind of interesting. Could color grade the foreground beforehand for this scene and make it a whole night scene. That'd be interesting. Kind of a funny one. I don't think I'm going to finish this one. This has got a lot more work <laughs> to do. <laughs> I didn't set it up very well. That's for sure. Not only like that, but oh, it does have a lot of pixels in it. Once you get up close. But yeah, we got some errors in this in this guy. I'd probably put a 3D batten in there. Uh, fix the roof lines. Fix this gutter. Throw in a downspout, place the driveway. Yeah. More time on prep on this one. Not a good one to end on. <laughs> it's, it's funny when you've got the main subject of the house is a little bit muted. It makes a huge difference when you just get a kind of crazy backdrop in there.
just playing around now. Anybody have any questions? Let me know. Otherwise, I'm just tweaking on this backdrop till I see something I like. happens when you send this to some filters, even though the backdrop's not set yet. It's a very brown house. Cut this, cut this part of the live video. <laughs> All right, I can't end on this one. I need to do a lot more work on this one. So we're gonna do that later. Maybe I'll post it later. Let's take a look at one more here. What do we have? Got some interior shots in here. Comments. Look at these interior shots. Uh, this does not look like it's using PBR, um, which would be nice as a base standard. Yeah. Or uh, it's not using ray trace. What is this? What is this shot in? Looks like it might be just regular PBR. We did Patrick's. That turned out pretty good. Let's see, Casey. Casey, I got to teach you how to export in full resolution. Also, look at this stool. We've got some flipped normals going on in that stool. Um, was this rendered in an outside software? You might need to turn on a double-sided texture or flip normals for your stools. Uh, Rob, Shane, man, you have some really good looking houses. Um, if you ever want to get just a sample of my work, shoot me one of your houses. I'd love to set this up. Right now, this lighting is such hard lighting. It's probably difficult to work with here. It doesn't represent your house in the way that I know that looks good. I know that house looks good. Got some materials that would want to fix in this one. Um, I need higher resolution stuff. These uh, these posts are all pretty low resolution. Um, 2048, you know, you can always cap it at 2048. Let's look at this one. Kind of an in interesting shot. If I was doing the shot, I would change the sun orientation so that we're shining and, and getting some shadows inside of this little alcove here. Um, I don't like that the sun's in the backdrop. I mean, you can do some cool stuff with... Um, this is one you can do a lot of cool stuff with sky replacement. Interesting design, Benane design, Trevor Penrose. Um, as much as I can, I kind of ditch, ditch these very um, similar looking flowers. I'll, I'll send you a tip for this. Let's do this. I'm going to fire up Chief. Here will be the last segment. We're going to talk about uh, distributed region tools. So in our build menu, we've got distributed objects. So we can do a spline distributed region. Let's just draw this out. And then let's open this guy up and select something. And in fact, I don't even think you need to select something, but let's start with something real quick. And we can start with anything. Um, so let's start with, I've got an electrical box here. I'm just going to load this up. And there's a number of different parameters we've got here, but here's the thought. I actually want to distribute out a plant. I want to distribute a plant and I want to change its orientation. So not its orientation per se, it's rotation in the, I guess you would call it the Z axis rotation. So 
I want to do a one in this case, it's going to call it random angle. Okay. I want to do distance in between 12 inches. That's fine for plants, right? Um, evenly scattered standard grid. I want an alternating grid. So alternate grid. Keep in mind it's duplicating this live, so it's going to be slow. Especially because I drew out a huge region. Oops. Next, I want to change that object scaling, and I want to change my minimum scaling to something like, if, it's, if we're doing a plant, maybe like 70%. And a maximum scale, 100 is fine. So 70%, 100, it's going to build that out, press OK. If you guys downloaded my grass, my 3D grass, this was the same method as we were using the distributed region tool. I guess it's not a tool, a distributed region. All right, so I get to press OK. Now, it doesn't matter that um, this is just an electrical outlet. That, that part doesn't matter at the moment, right? But I want to shape this to my garden bed. So I'm going to create a garden bed out of this. And keep in mind, you can use the break tool. So if you need a little sharper edges, you can always break this so that you have another little, sp little spline point, right? So we can square this up a little bit easier. So you can make some kind of organic shape. So it's really quick and easy to do some landscaping here. And then all, all I want to do here from, from here, I should say, is in my models, I have some plants. Let's pick up some landscaping plants. I've got these reeds. That's fine. Um, potted plants, maybe not as interesting. Let's see what else I've got. This is probably one of my favorites. So I can, in my edit toolbar, I can use toggle library replacement mode. And when I hover over this distributed region, look what happens. Pretty wild, right? So now let's pull a camera, see what happened. So we are resizing, rotating, and scattering that plant asset. Let's pull up a train. And you can see 12 inches a little bit too close. Let's make it something like 36. Now, transform, in fact, actually, let's even make it a little bit tighter than that. We can get some really cool stuff here if we just get in real tight. Yeah, probably want to shrink this down. Looks a little bit large for a front yard, something like that. Change the shape. Look at that. Isn't that wild? We might want to change that sizing even more. Change this to like 40%. Really going to get some variation then. Right, all different sizes there. Now in your edit menu, you can explode the distributed objects and then edit them from there. I can also... I believe I can move this in our Z delta so that it's negative six inches down into the ground once we explode it. Or once we explode it, let's see, did we get that in the ground? No, we. So once everything's still selected, then we could say negative six inches. Or in this case, it looked like it went the opposite way. Let's go. Still going the opposite way. Let's try it one more time. There we go. So very quickly, you can detail out a yard with that tool. And great part about that is you can save it to your library. Use it over and over again. So if you're into, you know, really detailing out your front yard, getting some landscape design, that's a couple good methods for doing it. So start with good textures. Start with good landscaping stuff. Uh, Spend a little time searching for this stuff. If you're really invested in, in giving, um, getting the best renders, that's the kind of stuff that I do. These are the kind of assets that I build out to give you know best quality renderings I can. Um, 
I think that's it. I think we're done for today. We had one failure in the, in the batch. <laughs> we'll have to figure out why I failed and, and get back to that. Um, and that's the thing when we're pricing out renderings, you got to price out with the understanding that you might make mistakes and need to start over or redo some things. So it's nice to have a workflow that's um, non-destructive so that you can edit um, stages of your uh, renderings. So, and that's most of my post edits there. Um, I do a whole different post edit workflow for interior shots. Maybe we'll get to that in a different show. So thanks everyone for anyone that was here live and uh, we'll catch you next time.